When I say Joe Douglas, what comes to mind? Do you think that he's one of the greatest GMs we've ever had? Or is he the worst in the league? Absolutely terrible at his job. Well, he's not terrible at his job, right? But how does he stack up against other general managers in the NFL? If I had to describe the job of a general manager in the NFL in two words, it would be roster management. The ultimate test of any general manager is their win-loss record. But the management of the roster is key. Since being hired after the 2019 draft, Jets general manager Joe Douglas has had an up and down tenure to say the least. I mean, being hired immediately after a draft does not help. One of the biggest knocks on Joe Douglas was his first draft class in 2020. So let's start there. Okay, so the 2020 draft. There's a lot to unpack here. First off, scouting was hampered by the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, the 2020 NFL season didn't even have fans in the stands. There was limited face-to-face -face interviews and the draft combine just didn't happen. For Douglas and the Jets, it was clear that he was trying to plug too many holes in one draft. Remember, he came on after a draft was already chosen in 2019. He was given players to work with that he did not choose himself. The cap situation was also a mess, but that's a topic for another video. So here it is, the 2020 draft in all its glory. Yeah. Okay, so looking at this list, there's really three players out of the batch of nine that are worth talking about. Makai Becton, Ashton Davis, and Bryce Hall. There are only three left on the team after four seasons. And to be honest, they're all hanging on by a thread. We could get into the Becton saga, but the bottom line is he's only really played two of the last four seasons. This is obviously due to injury, but it's becoming increasingly clear to us that he cannot be a starting left tackle for the Jets. He consistently cannot stop a speed rusher and his run blocking is average at best. He hasn't panned out to be our starting left tackle, and the truth is we're gonna have to move on from him. Now, Ashton Davis is a tricky one to talk about. He has really become a fan favorite this year. His first three seasons weren't that lackluster, but for some reason, he always finds himself in a position to make a turnover, get a takeaway from the opposing team. Even with a limited number of snaps, he has an oddly large amount of takeaways. They're probably gonna re-sign him just for the sheer fact that they're thin at safety. But at this point, I'm happy if they keep him. He's contributing, not only on the defense, but especially in special teams. Bryce Hall never really developed into the cornerback that we thought he was gonna be. He's been eclipsed by Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed, and barring injury, he's really not gonna get much playing time. He's a competent, cornerback at best, so if they keep him as a filler piece, I'm fine with it. But that's it out of the 2020 draft. Denzel Mims was a complete bust, Braden Mann's on another team, and everybody else is out of the league. That's only a 33% hit rate on a draft where you had nine picks. That is below average after four years. And by hit rate, I just mean guys that are on the team, not ones that are contributing consistently. The 2020 draft is one of the biggest stains on Joe Douglas's resume. Another stain is the offensive line. His number one priority when becoming the Jets general manager was to fix the offensive line. Him being an O-lineman himself meant that he understood what it took to be an offensive lineman in the NFL. Out of all of his drafts, there are three key offensive linemen that he has picked across his tenure. We talked about Makai Becton. The other one is Joe Tipman, and finally, AVT. The plan for the offensive line has just not panned out, but it's not because he hasn't been trying, it's because of injuries. Just like Becton, AVT has been hurt the last two seasons. He's only played one entire season out of his three years after being drafted. But injuries don't excuse everything. There are teams across the league that have dealt with a lot of offensive line injuries, but they don't go into the tank like the Jets do, because they have competent guys on the bench that can come in and start. The lack of O-line depth is an absolute smear on Joe Douglas's tenure. We're plugging in guys off the practice squad and expecting results. 
Every week, it seemed like there was a different group starting on the line, and that is not a recipe for success. I hope AVT comes back healthy, because if he does, then the interior of the line is really set with Lincoln, Tittman, and AVT at guard. And finally, we get to the elephant in the room, Zach Wilson. One of the most important jobs of any NFL GM is to select a quarterback. Drafting Zach Wilson number two overall was clearly a mistake. I'm not saying he can't be a backup in this league, but he is certainly not a starter. The lack of a competent quarterback over the last three years is the most important piece to this whole puzzle. Teams that have competent quarterbacks are able to lift the team when there's injuries. This is exactly why we got Aaron Rodgers, and the season got derailed because of his Achilles injury, but this is why we went out and got a four-time Hall of Fame quarterback. Joe Douglas failed at two aspects of his job. He failed to get a starting left tackle, and he picked the wrong quarterback. One of these things will be fixed immediately when Aaron Rodgers is fully healed and returns to the team. And the second one can be fixed in the draft or in the offseason. Joe Douglas is not the worst GM in the league, but he's not the best GM in the league. He's right down the middle. The number of players that he has drafted that are still on the team and contributing are at the league average. Unfortunately, the stain of the 2020 draft and the stain of drafting Zach Wilson has soured the fan base. Normally, things like that get a GM fired. But when you have Aaron Rodgers on the team and he's promising to come back and lead this team to wins, everybody gets a mulligan. Let's hope the plan works out, because if it doesn't, everybody's going to be gone.